There's all kinds of activity in robotics. Innovation is happening every day. The marketplace is really starting to adopt it at a really increasingly rapid pace. But there's still a lot of challenges around small to medium sized manufacturing environments. And you've come with a solution, Joey, with Elephant Robotics in this concept of medium batch. What do you mean by that? A lot of factories accept the medium batch productions, so which means the product will be only produced around 1,000 to 10,000 units. So for this case, for factories, uh, it is very expensive for them to make the whole automated production line. So what we suggest is they use existing production line, so which is full of workers, but they can add more cobalt to work with the workers, so it can improve at least 70% of the efficiency. And the cobot concept is a human and a machine working collaboratively together. Yeah, uh, because the traditional robot, uh, it is required to be very fast and accurate. But for cobot, it is easy to program. So even workers can manipulate with the cobot. So they can, uh, jet, uh, so they can touch the cobot and uh, the cobot will, uh, will stop. It is very safe and easy to program. Connectivity is a huge issue here in Duncan. We're seeing the uh, advance of 5G network. Where do you think 5G is going to impact the hardware landscape? So particularly actually within robotics and service robotics, where you've got you know, hugely complex visual um, processing systems which need to be embedded into the devices at the moment. Um, you know, a robot has to understand everything about its environment. Um, that's complicated, it's also expensive. And so what you can start to do with 5G is remove that processing power from the actual device onto the cloud which means that the device becomes significantly cheaper. We're talking you know, 1000 maybe $1,500 off the cost of that robot. Per robot. Per robot. So that really lowers the barrier to entry, which I guess is going to spur more innovation. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's a capital expenditure for any startup that's trying to put robots into the field. They're selling them on a service base, not a product base or a device base. So they have to fund all of the capital investment into those robots. If you can just take a load of cost out, it means they're much more capital efficient at getting more robots into the world. 5G networks are going to have a lot of advantages with respect to latency as well. So do you think there's any advantages with Elephant Robotics in the latency area? Yeah, uh, because right now some factories want to monitor the robots all the time. So they can use 5G to sure. put all the robots in the cloud. So they can check the status of the working process. And so, uh, so if everything goes wrong, so they can just monitor it. Well, and you lower the cost of updates as well right, by centralizing all that architecture. Yes. And one of the ways you've been successful is uh, forming corporate partnerships at Hacks. And so are there any examples of where those corporate partnerships hit the road and have had real benefit for your cohort companies? Yeah, so we've done a number with um, Michelin, for example, whereby we've been helping them to figure out some of their incredibly costly um, parts of their, um, of their processes and parts of their business. Replacing some of those workers with robots has been incredibly successful. Um, one interesting area in particular has actually been with Elephant Robotics as well. So one of the automotive companies that we work with realized through the collaboration with us that a cobot could replace a lot of the challenges they have within their organization. And so that actually was uh, an opportunity for your association with Hacks led to that client opportunity. Yeah. How did that work for you? Uh, so that client, uh, so they just found us of uh, one year before, so they acquired one robot from us. So we put the robot uh, in their factories for testing, and a few months later, so they just really buy one. So right now, we are putting more and more robots in that factory. Duncan, do you think that there's a future uh, expansion in the region for hacks? Where do you see the centers of innovation emerging? Yeah, so we're very China focused at the moment. Um, we see that as a huge area of opportunity. Um, a lot of people ask us where we're going to expand to next inside Asia. Actually, probably if we're going to expand, it will be just inside China and into different cities around China to continue to increase our footprint. Well, where do you think the center of an emerging center of innovation is? In emerging China? center of innovation. I mean, you know, Shenzhen is still the, the, the absolute capital. However, there are in different types of industry, like the heavier industries outside of Shenzhen, moving into Western China, where um, digitization is starting to become an increasingly important topic. And then you're starting to see new innovation hubs happening there.